Future trading involves risk and is not suitable for all investors. Content provided in this segment is meant for educational purposes and is not a solicitation to buy or sell commodities. Well, hi, this is Steve Spencer. I'm here with a take on global markets and with a little bit of a difference to what we normally do each week. This time I'm joined by my colleague Vuko Karov. We're going to have a little look at some of the implications of different things out there that we're seeing in the market and, and how they may affect the fundamentals in, in coming months. So Vuko, a little, little background for those that don't know you. Hi, Steve. Great to be here. I'm the senior analyst with uh, Fresh Agenda, now part of Everec, and uh, my role focuses on the Global Dairy Directions product and specifically the development and maintenance of the Dairy Trade Simulator. So in this session, we're going to have a look in our Dairy Trade Simulator. We're going to talk about some of the new functionality we have. What we can see on the screen here now is the is the full menu of the full simulator version. And you can see here we've got various elements of the model that users uh, can use in their business. We, we've got you know the, the outlook parameters. We've got areas where variables can change, the assumptions impacting supply and demand. And then there's a, a lot of different analysis outputs, analysis of trade. We're looking at value comparisons, both back and forward. And what we're going to look at today, though, are some of the new what-if tools that we've, we've built into this. We're going to play with a detailed what-if analysis. Firstly, also introduce the concept of what we're calling the DM tools variation of, of the DTS. And what Vuko is going to pull up now is the, is the front menu of the decision-making tools version, which is a smaller model with more of the direct decision-making implications. So it's got more of the scenario building, the what-if tools, and some of those key indicators we analyze. So, okay, so here we have the, the what-if uh, page in the DTS and the, and the DM tools model. This, is a, this allows us to just focus on changes to major parameters. And you can see those parameters on the left-hand side there. In this case, we're going to be looking at European skim milk powder. The main chart at the top shows the relationship between value and overlaying overlaying that on a turnover indicator. And the value lines, we've got historical prices, we've got forward futures, and they are daily. And then we have the projected fundamentals, which, which is the base case in our projection. So, Vuko, we're going to start looking at some of the big things that, uh, that might change going forward. Uh, so, firstly, European milk production. Um, if we're going to paint a, an optimistic case, um, let's let's talk about the you know there's some pressure on milk production we've seen we've seen some very wet weather in Ireland we've seen some some difficulties reduced cow numbers in some regions some issues with feed perhaps coming through so as we go forward um, what do you think we 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 knock production down um, down lower what's what's your take yeah, on this my take is we could knock down production one percentage point below the baseline mm -hmm. due to all of those reasons you just mentioned. Uh, we see the data in some key countries like Ireland and France well below in Q4. And uh, there is certainly a case to be made that that continues in the first half of the year. So I suggest we reduce that by 1% between February and six months out. Yep. So the user could include the change here in the orange cell, nominate a starting month, and nominate a number of months that that change effects in the table above and in this case we're going to minus that and the uh, user can then simply execute the apply changes button for that change to take impact you see the immediate impact over there on projected fundamentals uh, and on the chart we'll, we'll zoom into that later but when you know that chart's starting to move off the baseline so we carry on on to the demand side we go to the milk powders trade uh, so where are you seeing where are you seeing some scope from more rosy picture here? Well, certainly in the Asian markets that uh, have been below the prior year, such as Southeast Asia, due to high inflation in that market, we've certainly seen uh, those guys pull back on imports for, for quite some time now. And given how low the prices are at the moment, that might incentivize buyers in Southeast Asia to increase shipments by 5%. But obviously, we can expect that to take impact a little bit later in the year so let's say nine months from april how's that mm -hmm. and also the same case could be applied to china and hong kong i would say in that case maybe 10 percentage points and also taking effect from april and in both cases we will increase their shipments using the plus button here yep. and apply the change 
now we're seeing a bit more action. So domestic demand in Europe as well, that's that's been that's been very sluggish. We've seen lower, you know, retail sales in the data for some time, um, most of last year, with processed food being biggest, you know, big categories of uh, skim milk powder use being below the line. So going forward, you know, we assume that might come back, might start to come back later in the year. So what would you suggest yeah. we do here? I suggest in the second half of the year, we lift it by two percentage points relative to the base. So two percentage points between July in December 2024, and we will simply plus that change in the bottom mm -hmm. and apply it at the top. So in this case, you would see at the end of the calendar year, the impact on European skim milk powder PFVs is close to 300 euros a ton. Yeah. So the idea the user can then save this scenario using some buttons over there to the right and, and yeah. hold that and use that for further analysis, yeah? Yeah, there are different options here that you see on the screen, and particularly in the three purple buttons to the right. Mm -hmm. Under the save scenario option, a user could execute that button and save the assumptions from this scenario, which is different than our baseline. And what that option would do is save a CSV file on the user's personal computer. And then that scenario could be shared with other team members and also be loaded in a different version of the dairy trade simulator for further comparisons. So Vuko, let me get this straight. If if you make any change at all in these orange cells, so these are the variables in our model. So they go through all those buttons on the left hand side there, the blue buttons. You could you could make any change there. That could be a composite scenario. So all the changes you make there, as long as you apply, it goes through to the PFVs, but you could actually throw in a whole basket of things you know, positive or negative in, in alternate view and save that, right, and use it later. That, yeah. that, that's correct. Same like we've done a composite scenario now of different supply and demand variables. A user could potentially compose both a bullish and a bearish scenario mm -hmm. and then compare both versus the baseline. Okay. So let's come on to some bearish factors. But something I want to ask you first is what we're seeing here is a European skim. And we always have, you know, in our in our analysis, the strong belief that it's really Europe is dominating most of the sentiment or most of the fundamentals of the US non-fat market. So can we just pop in and see the impact on US non-fat from this screen by looking at you've got those buttons there across and I see US non-fat. So we can go in and see what that would have done, just the European changes alone. A user can execute any of these black and white buttons. And in this case, like you said, Steve, we'll go with the US non-fat dry milk option. Executing that button would automatically populate the orange cells in the top left corner of the screen. And that would simply generate the turnover chart for that region and product selection. So the changes, even though we've 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 talked about the context of Europe, particularly the milk supply and the domestic demand, but here we're showing what we what we believe to be the impact of those changes on the US projected values. Hence we see these charts. We can see that the line chart over the turnover, but here we can also see the impact on PFEs in cents per pound as a direct impact. That's correct, because the, the same variables that affect European prices also flow into the U.S. as well. And then, yep. obviously, the impact on the U.S. PAVs is different than the impact on the European skim milk powder model. And that has mm -hmm. to do with historical relationships between the physical variables, which are deriving straight from the respective balance sheets, and the time series in question. So in this case, in the U.S., by the end of the year, you see more like a 17 cents a pound impact on their non-fed dry milk price. Okay, so let's go to, let's let's talk about a bear case then, and you're going to go back to baseline and back to the European skim. In order to, to compose that bearish case, Steve, I suggest we click this button, this purple button here, which is back to baseline, and that will simply yep. delete all the changes that we just made to the baseline, and it, re it will revert back to the starting point. And we go yep. back to European skim milk powder, and that will allow us to have a new starting point for analysis, and then we can explore some bearish scenarios. Okay, so what would you suggest we do here? We're going to would you simply flip the milk production to um, to a positive one? To a positive one, yeah, and then the same by the same quantum. Just take that one percent. We we increase it by one percentage point again, starting with April. So a better start in spring, yeah. Better start, but we take it for nine months, and then 
we simply apply that as a plus in the table. And so a bit of the logic the here, a bit of the logic here between, behind this one, there may be a better spring and we may see a, a better start there. We're just looking at some of the uh, longer range weather forecasts for Europe now and we're seeing while through winter we're seeing a bit more rainfall than usual, as we get further into spring uh, and as these months roll in this forecast and we're getting out to May and June, we're seeing warmer than normal conditions. So we've had plenty of moisture and now we're expecting the weather forecast expected to see a, um, you know, a warmer than usual. So that might mean more pasture growth and that's a, that's a watch out, which might underpin this 1% change that you've just put through. Yeah. And so back to the, the model. Back to the model and another factor that could contribute to this impact, Steve, is that some of these major dairy companies in Europe are now increasing their milk prices. And if you look mm. at farm gate margins, they're looking increasingly more favorable. Yeah, that's a good point. So they bought in feed costs are lower, but it's all about grass growth in spring. And with a good margin, milk prices up in the mid 40s, as you say, that's, uh, that, could be, that could be a bit of enticement. Okay, so let's let's talk about market side stuff. And again, those trade numbers, would you just flip it the other way and decrease the outlook for this trade going forward yeah. as, a, as a good contra? Yeah. In the key Asian markets, I suggest we take five percentage points down relative to the baseline in each case. Yeah. We recently saw some numbers in China suggesting that their relative stocks to use in skim milk powder are still relatively heavy. Mm-hmm. Southeast Asia, we know has been in trouble for a while. And I suggest in these very scenarios, we simply show what the potential downside is and simply apply this for nine months starting in April in both cases. Yep. So what we're seeing on the right-hand side here is is what the annual numbers are. That that reflects the change Foucault just made. Let's go back again to that domestic situation and yeah, maybe say there isn't there isn't a little bump in domestic use. And during the year, we've, we've actually got a, you know, no improvement on what we saw yeah. in 23. Yeah. I suggest we simply take half a percentage point down um, between February and June. So first half, 2024, and then I'll simply minus that yep. change in the table and execute the, the button. So we get a similar sort of effect out there and towards the end of the year in Q4, we see those bars starting to get a bit deeper. So... You know, while we can see those impacts on those two charts there, what you've done here, Vuko, on this chart we're seeing is, is just comparing the the high and low case or the bullish and bearish case and just showing the spread of outcomes that are possible in, yep. in those values. And that's we're doing um, that for both the European skim milk powder PAVs, but also for the US non-fat dry milk. But I would like to make another point here. These changes that have taken effect, particularly EU milk production, they're not only affecting skim milk powder values, but they're also affecting other products such as butter and cheese. That's right. That's a very good point. And the other thing, Vuko, which which would be feasible here and what this tool allows you to do is to say, you know, in Europe, it's all about, you know, is the cheese market stable and what's left for the commodities on the side? Pretty much that's how it, that's how it plays. So if, if we saw a change in milk production and we saw, say, cheese volume maintained without change, we can hold the cheese volume and simply apply the shift in milk to skim and butter That's for right. more dire impacts, right, than what we've seen here. That's another option we, we could have shown. But for now, this has been a very interesting session. This has been a bit of a difference. Just to say these are things in discussion in Europe at the moment, just how these big factors swing around. We're showing the way in which our platform can allow users to quickly make sense of those, the materiality of them, and, and see what, what their implication is for uh, the U.S. market for other commodities, uh, and you get you get that you know overall overall perception of the the risk either way. That's great, Vuko. Thank you. It's uh, that's an interesting session. Thank you, Steve. Always a pleasure. If anyone wants to follow us up and and ask more questions about this, uh, reach out to either Vuko or myself, um, and and we'd be happy to um, further enlighten. Okay, we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you.